our clinic. This is where we do all of our surgeries, primarily spays and neuters, but also some other surgeries that we're able to perform. It's effective, but it's certainly not ideal. This is basically the extent of our um, medical area. This is our treatment area and our prep area where we get the animals ready for surgery. And then through that window um, is our surgery area. We have very, very limited space. We have only one large cage, so if we have more than one large animal, we have to uh, schedule them at different times, which is not ideal for adopting them um, as quickly as we'd like. Um, as you can see, we, we are limited in our lighting. We are limited in um, our space. I think we've made really good use of the space that we have, but we could certainly use a much larger area. We've um, to date done almost a thousand surgeries in the year and a half that I've been here on a part-time basis and um, we could certainly do double that if we had a larger facility and more room to actually maneuver and be more efficient. We get absolutely no funding other than private donations so it makes it a little bit challenging to give everybody all the care that they need. The municipal shelters have to take any animal that comes in as a stray or any animal that's basically abandoned. So they don't have the luxury of, um, you know, not euthanizing. They end up euthanizing for space, which is really quite sad. Our saving train is a bus that our intake manager takes to the other shelters and temperament tests animals. And if they pass the temperament test, then um, we bring them here so that they, they don't get euthanized. And then we will spay or neuter them, we'll deworm them, vaccinate them, microchip them, and they stay here until they find a home, however long that takes. This is our saving train that we're so proud of. Uh, this is a bus that was donated to us. We've retrofitted it with kennels inside. On the side of the bus, these are all dogs whose lives were saved by the saving train. They were dogs that had run out of time and space at another shelter and um, got a second chance at life by getting a ride on the saving train to come here. Now both of these dogs came on the same saving train and the saving train trip meant a difference of life or death for these dogs. These are dogs that were scheduled to be put down at the other facility. Oh, double lickies. I got double lick Oh, chewies too. <laughs> This is an example of a dog that came to us through the saving train. She was rescued yesterday from a facility in Red Bluff, California. She was out of time. They were out of space. She was scheduled for euthanasia. And she's here today, and she's going to go home. I recently moved here from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, I worked at an animal shelter there as well, a much larger scale, um, where a lot of euthanasia was involved. We, we have the option of going to shelters like that and bringing dogs back that would otherwise be euthanized. We give them a sanctuary, a place to live, and a potential of adoption and finding them a home. We, we are allowed to socialize with them and give them time that in other shelters they wouldn't have. Um, other facilities, you know, they, they maintain life. Here we give them an environment to live, a suitable home, before they get to an actual home, a permanent place. This is what we like to consider a transition. <coughs>